The last ship began with a scientist named Dr. Rachel Scott visiting a quarantine camp in Egypt. She went to that quarantine camp to take blood samples from people who were infected with deadly virus. There were approximately 6,000 people who stayed in that quarantine camp. They had the same symptoms after they were infected with the virus. Sadly, the cure for the virus hadn't been found until this day. They hoped that Dr. Rachel could find the vaccine and the cure for the virus after she took and investigated their blood samples. At U.S. Naval Station in Virginia, 217 members of the U.S. Nathan James' crew were working under the command of Captain Tom Chandler. They were ordered to take Dr. Rachel and her colleague, Dr. Quincy Tuffett, to the Arctic. Dr. Rachel and Dr. Quincy would conduct some research in order to find the cure for the virus. They were looking for rare birds in the Arctic because it was believed that those birds could be the cure for the virus. Four months had finally passed. The Nathan James was still patrolling in the Arctic while waiting for Dr. Rachel and Dr. Quincy to finish conducting their research. Not only being tasked to guard the area where Dr. Rachel and Dr. Quincy conducted their experiments, those soldiers were also tasked to launch and destroy a missile. After they successfully conducted the first flight of the missile, Captain Tom decided to withdraw his troops from the ocean. He appreciated all members of the crew, saying that he was proud of them because they had worked hard. He told them that they could return home now. He also sent a team to take Dr. Rachel to the ship because the period of time for conducting the research had ended. Even though Dr. Rachel hadn't finished doing the research, she couldn't do anything but to obey the order from Captain Tom. When she arrived on the ship, she protested to Captain Tom about his decision to withdraw her from the Arctic. But Captain Tom said that he had done everything that his superior ordered him, including treating Dr. Rachel and Dr. Quincy like the guests of honor aboard that ship. He said that he couldn't do anything to help Dr. Rachel because the allowed period of time for conducting the research had ended. Lieutenant Danny, the leader of the Naval Mountain Warfare Special Forces Unit aboard Nathan James, and Commander Kara, the Combat Information Center officer on Nathan James, sneaked into a room and made out there. It seemed that they wanted to make the best of our time there before they returned to the United States. Dr. Rachel called National Security Agency and asked them to give her more time because she hadn't found what she was looking for. Because of that, National Security Agency finally decided to extend the mission and ordered Captain Tom to stay in the Arctic. After Captain Tom received that order, he began to get curious about what Dr. Rachel was looking for in the Arctic. He watched Dr. Rachel and found out that she collected the feces of the birds. Suddenly, the team detected four to five helicopters in the place where Dr. Rachel was collecting the samples of the birds' feces. The soldiers who guarded Dr. Rachel realized that those helicopters didn't belong to their team, but belonged to Russia. They immediately ran off, but those Russian helicopters chased them right away. During that chaotic situation, Dr. Rachel was still trying to save the samples of the bird's feces that she had collected. Captain Tom immediately ordered his team to prepare themselves for a war. After getting into a gun battle for a while, Captain Tom and his team managed to survive. They even managed to capture a Russian soldier and held him hostage. Captain Tom asked that man about the reason why he and his team attacked them. That man told him that they were looking for the vaccine for the virus too. Captain Tom was getting even more confused when he heard that. He ordered all members of the crew to leave that place because he wanted to talk to Dr. Rachel in private. After everybody had left that place, Captain Tom asked Dr. Rachel about the content of the suitcase that was targeted by those Russian soldiers. Dr. Rachel finally told him that when she visited Egypt seven months ago, she found out that the virus of the pandemic had a genetic structure that she had never seen before. That virus kept mutating and killing many people in Egypt. Before Dr. Rachel left for Virginia, she heard that the virus had been spread to Asia and Africa. Because of that, the PUVU and the CDC sent her to Egypt and ordered her to collect the blood samples from people who were infected with the virus. They hoped that they could find the vaccine for that virus after they analyzed their blood samples. But unfortunately, they still hadn't found the vaccine until this day. Dr. Rachel revealed that she went to the Arctic to search the primordial strain of the virus. She thought that it could be found in the feces of the birds there because they had been infected with the virus due to a change in their environment.
She admitted that those Russian soldiers managed to find her there because of the private satellite network that she carried. She explained that she carried that private satellite network so that she could keep getting connected to the laboratory in the United States, which would allow her to tell them about what she found in the Arctic easily. She said that what she was doing had been approved by the White House, so she asked Captain Tom to understand their situation. She explained that the virus was in the phase two right now, and the global pandemic would wipe out over 80% of the world's population if they didn't stop it soon. While Captain Tom and Dr. Ratchel were having an argument, Mike Slattery, the executive officer of the Nathan James, suddenly came to that place and informed Captain Tom that the President of the United States wanted to talk to him. It was revealed that before the current President of the United States was elected, she used to work as the White House press secretary. But after the former President of the United States died two months ago because he was infected with the virus, which was followed by the death of the former Vice President of the United States a week later because of the same reason, she was elected as the new President. Captain Tom told the President that he and his team had been just attacked by some Russian soldiers. But the President doubted that those soldiers were enemies. She argued that there was no such thing as enemies or allies anymore because many soldiers in this world had died because of the virus. She just prayed that Dr. Rachel would find the cure for the virus and take it to the United States soon. After Captain Tom heard that, he finally turned on the TV and watched the news about the global pandemic. According to that news, the global pandemic had caused global food scarcity and the hospitals had been crowded with many people who were infected with the virus. With a heavy heart, Captain Tom finally decided to gather all members of his crew and tell them about what was going on in their home country. Captain Tom worried about his family, who stayed in the United States. He tried to call them for several times, but he couldn't do it due to the unavailable network. He was sad because of that. There was nothing that he could do right now except looking at the pictures of his family and remembering about the happy time that they had spent together. Alicia Granderson, the officer of the deck on the Nathan James, also tried to call her family, but she was unable to do it. Only Mike who was able to contact his family. Sadly, he found out that his daughter had died because she was infected with the virus. Suddenly, Alicia and her team received a report that a missile had been just fired at a land in France. They also received a warning to close their eyes because its flash of light could blind their eyes. Even though the missile wasn't fired at them, the electromagnetic waves from the missile still managed to cause some damages to the ship. Captain Tom urged the crew to fix the damages because the thermal radiation from the missile would approach them soon. He even had to hold on to the last fuse of the ship so that the ship would get powered by electricity again. Because of that, the Nathan James managed to operate again. But the problem was, they began to run out of the fuel. They predicted that the ship could only survive for six hours with the remaining fuel. But not long after that, the marine radar detected another ship that was sailing not far from there. Captain Tom tried to contact that ship, but there was no answer. He finally decided to send a team to that ship and order them to take that ship's fuel. Before they visited that ship, Dr. Ratchel warned them not to take off their protective masks because she was afraid that all passengers on that ship had been infected with the virus. As soon as the Nathan James crew arrived on that ship, they took the ship's fuel and as many foods as they could. They found out that all passengers on that ship had died except one man. Dr. Ratchel approached that man and took his blood sample. She decided to let that man die in that place because she was afraid that he would infect other people if they took him to their ship. While the crew was leaving that place, a soldier named Franklin Benz suddenly fell down the stairs. His protective mask was removed because of that. He realized that he had been infected with the virus, and he was afraid that he would infect his coworkers too. Because of that, he finally decided to take his own life by shooting himself in the head. The next day, the crew of the Nathan James held a funeral for Franklin. Dr. Rachel and Dr. Quincy didn't attend the funeral because they were busy conducting experiments to find the vaccine for the virus. After that, Captain Tom returned to the room and received a video message from his wife. In that video message, his wife told him that their family wasn't infected by the virus and that they were waiting for him right now in her father's place.
Captain Tom asked Dr. Rachel to try her best to create the vaccine on the ship because the laboratory where she was working at was still 332 miles away from the nearest land. He also asked Mike not to disband the crew because they hadn't received any positive responses from the land yet. He didn't want to risk the mission failing, especially to consider that they only had around 80 hazmat suits. Meanwhile, there were 216 members of the crew. After that, Captain Tom announced that they wouldn't return to the land, yet because he thought that the Nathan James was the safest place on Earth right now. He hoped that Dr. Rachel could create the vaccine so that they could save the United States and the world soon. The crew was amazed by the decision that Captain Tom made. They immediately agreed with his decision and showed him their respect. After Dr. Quincy heard that announcement, he called someone and informed that person about Captain Tom's decision. Lieutenant Danny led the training for the crew so that they would improve their instinct, accuracy, awareness, and many other skills that were necessary for battles. He also hoped that they could improve their immunity by joining the training. Alicia asked her subordinates to limit their communication with the outside world so that other ships wouldn't be able to detect them easily. Lieutenant Danny and Commander Kara's relationship began to get strained since Franklin died. They also worried about how their families were doing in the United States because they hadn't heard anything from them. At night, some members of the crew suddenly heard someone ask for help. But since Alisha had ordered them to limit their communication with the outside world, they decided to ignore that person. Later, all members of the crew gathered on the deck. They shared about how they missed their families. They also prayed for their loved ones, hoping that they would survive from the pandemic. After that, Dr. Ratchel explained about how the virus was transmitted from one person to another. Since it was transmitted through the air, everybody could be infected with it, even from a dead person. The symptoms of those who had been infected with the virus usually included body weakness, cough, bleeding, and dementia. According to the CDC, the incubation period of the virus is between three to five days, but this statement was made when they were still in the Arctic. Dr. Rachel believed that there had been artificial change in the incubation period of the virus. She warned them to stay alert and be ready with their hazmat suits. But Mike questioned her statement as if he didn't believe that the virus was that dangerous. It seemed that he didn't really like Dr. Rachel. He asked her why she was so sure about her statement, even though it had been a while for her since she last visited the land. Captain Tom didn't like what Mike was doing. After the meeting, he berated him for questioning Dr. Rachel's statement. He said that at times like this, they were supposed to support each other, not to discourage each other, especially Dr. Rachel, because she was the only hope that the world had right now. After a while, Captain Tom and his crew finally arrived in Guantanamo Bay Naval Base. They immediately checked that place by using a helicopter, but it seemed that there was no life there. Captain Tom didn't want to risk of losing Dr. Rachel because the world needed her right now. So he warned her not to come to the land with them. He promised that he would search the land and get anything that she needed for the research. After that, he divided the team into several small teams. A team was tasked to find fuel, a team was tasked to find food, and another team was tasked to find medicine. Before they went to the land, Captain Tom warned them that the oxygen tubes that they carried would only last for 60 minutes. While everybody was busy with their work, Dr. Quincy sneaked into a room and pulled a lever that would cause a poisonous gas to leak. But fortunately, a member of the crew suddenly caught him and stopped him from doing what he was doing. When the team arrived at a hospital, they found many dead bodies there. A team found the fuel and tried their best to transfer the fuel to their ship. Another team went to a pharmacy and took all medicine that they could find there. They also found a centrifuge there and took it because Dr. Rachel would need it for the research. Captain Tom found a car with a dead body inside. He suspected that car and decided to approach it. But while he and his team were approaching that car, a man who claimed that he was from the United States suddenly screamed and told them to stay away from that car. Not long after that, the car exploded. That American man was named Tex Nolan. Tex said that he was not an enemy. He said that their real enemies were the 14 Al-Qaeda terrorists who had been spread throughout that island. He revealed that he and six other men were working as private security contractors in that place. 
But sadly, his six co-workers had died, and he was the only person who remained alive. Tex warned them that the Al-Qaeda terrorist would probably return to that place soon with their RPGs. For that reason, he suggested them to protect their ship carefully. Turned out, what Tex predicted was true. Not long after that, the Al-Qaeda terrorists came to that place and attacked Captain Tom and his team with their RPGs. At hospital, the team tried to leave that place, but unfortunately, they got locked inside. They couldn't do anything when the enemies began to shoot their weapons at them. To worsen the situation, they also began to run out of their oxygen. Not only hospital, the Al-Qaeda terrorists also attacked the food storage warehouse. Since there was a soldier who got shot by the enemy and needed immediate treatment, might finally allow Dr. Retchell to go to the island and help the wounded soldier. In the food storage warehouse, Captain Tom was surprised when he found out that those Al-Qaeda terrorists had captured and held Tex hostage. He tried to negotiate with them. He promised that he and his team would only take a small amount of the fuel and the food from that place if they released Tex. But those terrorists rejected that offer. They refused to share any fuel and food with Captain Tom and his team. Captain Tom finally decided to send a signal to Mike, who was watching them from the ship, to bomb that building in order to distract the attention of those terrorists. As soon as that building was bombed, Captain Tom and his team attacked those terrorists and finally managed to defeat them. After that, Captain Tom invited Tex to join his crew on their mission to create a vaccine for the virus. He thought that Tex could probably help them to save the world. Captain Tom and his team then took all foods that they could find in that food storage warehouse. With those food supplies, they could survive on the ship for two weeks. Suddenly, they received an emergency call from an English ship that was located near them. The crew of the ship claimed that they were not infected with the virus and they only needed a little food. Captain Tom finally decided to allow them to come to their ship and share the food that they had with them. In the laboratory, Lieutenant Danny thanked Dr. Rachel for saving his coworker, who almost died earlier. Tex was also treated by Dr. Rachel there. It seemed that he also began to have a crush on her. Captain Tom approached Dr. Retchell and showed his gratitude for what she had done for the crew personally. He had set his hopes on her and believed that she could do more than this later. The ship that claimed that they were an English ship was getting closer to the Nathan James. The crew of the Nathan James was surprised when Alicia told them that it was not an English ship, but a Russian ship. Captain Tom then warned them to prepare themselves for a battle. It was revealed that the Russian ship had been targeting the Nathan James. The commanding officer of the ship, Konstantin Ruskov, admitted that there was something that they wanted from the Nathan James. Ruskov revealed that he had been exploring the world just to find the Nathan James. He said that he didn't want to cause any troubles for Captain Tom and his crew. All he wanted was that they brought the primordial strain of the virus that they had found and Dr. Rachel to them. Captain Tom told him that he couldn't give him what he wanted because he only obeyed order from his own country. He also asked him to leave that place because it was the territory of the United States. Captain Tom realized that Ruskov had recently published an autobiography book about his life and the naval battles in the modern era. Ruskov threatened that he would destroy the Nathan James like how he destroyed a land in France back then if Captain Tom didn't do what he asked him. Captain Tom tried to negotiate with him by asking him to discuss this matter in person because he didn't want any unnecessary battles to happen. Before leaving the ship, Captain Tom talked to Dr. Rachel. He asked her if those Russians would be able to create the vaccine for the virus if they were allowed to visit the Arctic. Dr. Rachel answered that it depended on how talented the people they sent to that place. Captain Tom then asked her to allow him to bring Dr. Quincy to the meeting with Ruskov. He said that he would also take other members of the crew with him, including Tex. After a while, Captain Tom and his team finally arrived in the meeting place. Ruskov mocked Captain Tom and his team who wore hazmat suits. He asked them why would they wore such heavy suits in this hot weather. Captain Tom ignored him and told him that they needed to examine him first to see if he was infected with the virus or not. After they examined him, they found out that he was clean and not infected with the virus. Meanwhile, Mike was watching the Russian soldiers placing naval mines around the Nathan James to prevent them from leaving the harbor. 
He was angry when he saw that. He threatened that he would attack the Vierney, the ship that was under the command of Rustoff, if he didn't see Captain Tom leaving the meeting place in an hour. During the meeting, Rustov told Captain Tom about the reason why he destroyed the land in France that night which resulted in millions of people getting killed. He explained that he did that so that Captain Tom wouldn't be able to refuel the Nathan James in that place. He said that there was no way that he would allow Captain Tom and his crew to take the primordial strain of the virus. Captain Tom told him that he was not interested in creating the vaccine by using that primordial strain of the virus for themselves. He said that their mission was to save humanity, but Ruskov disagreed with him. He thought that it was useless to save the world. He said that only the strong who would survive meanwhile the weak would perish. He used the Chinese government who killed 60 million of their people to stop the virus from spreading as an example. Captain Tom then gave the sample of the primordial strain of the virus to Ruskov. He also gave him Dr. Quincy so that they could conduct the research and create the vaccine for the virus together. But Ruskov immediately rejected his offer. He told him that it was Dr. Rachel whom he wanted and not Dr. Quincy. After saying that, he suddenly shot his subordinate in the head. He did that to warn Captain Tom that he could kill anyone ruthlessly. After that, Captain Tom and his team returned to the Nathan James. When they arrived there, they found out that Ruskov's subordinates had placed naval mines around their ship. They then discussed about how they could leave the harbor without having to touch those mines. Meanwhile, Dr. Quincy was taking other samples of the primordial strain of the virus behind Dr. Rachel's back. It wasn't revealed yet about the reason why he was doing that and what he was aiming for. Captain Tom finally decided to send two divers to destroy shallow coral reefs by using a grenade to make a way for them to leave that place. Unfortunately, while those divers were doing their mission, they were caught by the Russian soldiers who were patrolling that area. Captain Tom was angry when he saw that. He immediately ordered his subordinates to shoot at the water to warn Ruskov and those Russian soldiers. He told them that he would count to five and threatened that he would shoot them if they hadn't left that place by the time he finished counting. After Ruskov heard that, he finally decided to give up and leave that place. Despite that, he still warned Captain Tom to bring Dr. Rachel to him within 24 hours. In the night, Dr. Quincy suddenly approached Dr. Rachel and aimed his gun at her. He forced her to go with him. Suddenly, a member of the crew saw them and shot at them. Dr. Quincy asked Dr. Rachel to run away from that place, but Dr. Rachel used that situation to ask for help from the crew. Dr. Quincy threatened that if Dr. Rachel didn't go with him, then he would open the tube that contained the virus so that everybody in that room would be infected with the virus. Dr. Rachel tried to calm him down and reason with him. She tried to persuade him not to behave carelessly. After a while, her strategy finally worked. While Dr. Quincy was having no idea about what to do, a soldier suddenly captured and arrested him. Dr. Rachel wondered why Dr. Quincy would do such thing even though they had been working together for 10 years. She suspected that there was something that Dr. Quincy was hiding from her. While Dr. Quincy was being interrogated, he finally revealed that Ruskov had kidnapped his family and held them captive in their ship right now. He also said that before he left for the Arctic, he shared information about the virus with a Russian scientist named Sergei Yumanov. He thought that it was the reason why Ruskov managed to find him and Dr. Rachel in the Arctic. But all he knew about Sergei now was that he had been killed by Ruskov. On the Vierney, Ruskov summoned Kelly Toffet, Dr. Quincy's wife, to his room. He asked her to have a drink with him. While they were having a drink, Ruskov asked Kelly to wait and see if her husband would be able to complete his mission or not. After Captain Tom heard Dr. Quincy's explanation, he finally decided to make a new plan to leave that place through the narrow canal. He also planned to trick Ruskov by using Commander Kara as the bait. He ordered Kara to pretend to become Dr. Rachel, who would be brought by Dr. Quincy. Lieutenant Danny worried that something bad would happen to his lover Kara so he asked Captain Tom to allow him to accompany Kara on this mission. After Captain Tom allowed him to do that, Danny and Kara finally went to the Vierney by using a small boat. While they were approaching that Russian ship, 
other members of the Nathan James crew tried to trick Ruskov and make him think that their ship didn't move by wrapping the deck with aluminum foil. It seemed that their strategy worked. When Ruskov focused on watching the Nathan James in the marine radar, the Nathan James continued to speed up through the narrow canal. Ruskov saw a green dot approaching his ship in the marine radar. He thought that that green dot was the small boat that carried Dr. Quincy and Dr. Rachel. Turned out, that green dot was the small boat that carried Danny and Kara, who brought some activated missiles. Ruskov planned to destroy the Nathan James after they got Dr. Rachel and the primordial strain of the virus. While they were getting closer to the Vyrny, Danny suddenly stopped the machine and asked Kara to protect herself. But Kara refused to do that because Captain Tom had personally asked her to fire those missiles. After Danny heard that, he finally decided to begin to fire those missiles at the Vyrny. As soon as the Vyrny got exploded, Captain Tom ordered his subordinates to fire missiles at the coral reefs that blocked their way. Because of the sudden attack from Captain Tom and his crew, the Vyrny had to suffer from the damage in the hull. Twelve members of the crew also died in that explosion. After Danny and Kara returned to their ship, Danny told Kara that he wanted them to have a break for a while. Dr. Quincy protested to Captain Tom about the attack that he did on the Vyrny. He thought that what he did could put his family in danger. On the Vyrny, there was a scientist that was held captive by Ruskov. That scientist was named Niels Sorensen. Niels was mad at Ruskov because he didn't brought Dr. Rachel to him. The next scene revealed about Captain Tom's life before he was sent to the Arctic. Apparently, at first, he was tasked by the White House to join another naval force to clean the rivers in the United States. But suddenly, his task was cancelled, and he was sent to the Arctic to conduct a missile test and research. His children were sad because they wouldn't be able to see their father for the next six months. So, before Captain Tom left for the Arctic, his children gave him a bracelet. They hoped that their father would always remember them when he looked at that bracelet. Alicia informed her co-worker that they would go to Costa Rica to find some monkeys to test the vaccine for the virus. Andy Chung, a naval engineer of the Nathan James, thought that there was something wrong with the machine after he heard a buzzing noise from it. In the laboratory, Dr. Ratchel was working hard days and nights to create the vaccine for the virus by using the samples of the viruses that she had collected. While she was working, she looked at the picture of her and her boyfriend. It seemed that she was missing her boyfriend. After that, Dr. Ratchel persuaded Captain Tom to allow Dr. Quincy to return to the laboratory and work together with her again. She said that she couldn't do this work by herself. She explained that she needed Dr. Quincy because he was an expert in bioinformatics. She promised that she would return him to the isolation room after he had done his work. Captain Tom finally allowed her to visit Dr. Quincy. Dr. Ratchel tried to persuade Dr. Quincy to return to their work but he refused to do it. Dr. Quincy thought that Dr. Rachel was a selfish person who only thought of herself and didn't care about other people's feelings. Dr. Quincy and Dr. Rachel then got into an argument. Dr. Rachel finally gave up. She then asked Captain Tom to help her to persuade Dr. Quincy. Suddenly, the power in that place went out. Dr. Rachel panicked when she saw that. She worried that the power outage would ruin the experiment that she was conducting by using the samples of the viruses in the laboratory. There was also a fire in another part of the ship. Despite that, Captain Tom ordered Andy to focus on flowing the electricity from the generator to the laboratory so that Dr. Rachel could save her work. Since RO system was also shut down, Captain Tom warned the crew to save the clean water and not to use it for unnecessary activities, such as shaving. He said that they could only use the clean water for cooking and drinking. Mike was sent to persuade Dr. Quincy to return to the laboratory. He said that Dr. Quincy would be a worthless person if he refused to continue doing his work. According to the rule, the crew was allowed to get rid of a person from their ship if that person had no use for the team. After Dr. Quincy heard that, he finally agreed to return to the laboratory, but with one condition. He asked them to give him time to enjoy the sunlight and play chess with the most skilled chess player on that ship. Mike agreed to do what he asked. After they made a deal, Dr. Quincy finally returned to the laboratory and continued doing his work.
Andy reported about what he found out about the ship's generator machine. He asked Captain Tom to give him a week to fix the ship's generator machine. He said that the machine could still operate, but it could only operate for less than an hour. Meanwhile, the ship needed five hours for cooling down. For that reason, Captain Tom finally decided to postpone their journey to Costa Rica. He suggested them to go to the nearest land instead because they might find clean water to drink there, especially to consider that the remaining clean water that they had right now was only enough for them for two days. The next day, the crew began to collect all water that they had, including beer and cola, and distill them. After operating the ship for an hour, Captain Tom decided to stop for a while because the machine was overheating. In the laboratory, Dr. Rachel and Dr. Quincy found out that there was a progress in their work. They were glad when they realized that they had successfully created a vaccine. Now all that they needed to do was to test that vaccine. But suddenly, there was another power outage on that ship. Dr. Rachel panicked because she needed the electricity for her experiment. The viruses that she used for her experiment needed to be kept in a cool temperature, at least at 5 Celsius degrees. Meanwhile, the temperature on that ship was at 45 Celsius degrees now. Suddenly, Andy had a good idea. He suggested that they submerge the briefcase that contained the viruses below 400 feet so that they could keep the cool temperature for the viruses. Fortunately, his strategy worked. They managed to keep the temperature of the briefcase at 44 Celsius degrees. The next day, Captain Tom ordered his crew to prepare big parachutes. He hoped that the parachutes would attract the wind that would pull the ship and rotate the propeller. When Captain Tom was skeptical of his own plan, Russ Jeter, the Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy, approached him and told him that he and the whole crew had set high hopes on him. He believed that Captain Tom could save them again, just like how he had saved them from two previous incidents that almost killed them, which was the attack from Al-Qaeda terrorists and the attack from Ruskov. Not long after that, Captain Tom saw water flowing on the ground and the flag blowing in the wind. He then ordered his crew to launch big parachutes into the air. His strategy finally worked. The ship could finally operate again. Despite that, they still hadn't found another ship or the nearest land that they could visit. Since they ran out of clean water, some members of the crew began to get dehydrated. Dr. Rachel tried her best to help them. She used the remaining clean water that they had to keep them alive. When everybody was desperate about their situation, Alicia suddenly saw some seagulls flying near their ship, which meant that there was a land nearby. Not long after that, they finally found the land. Captain Tom and his crew were extremely happy when they saw that land because it contained a lot of clean water. They stopped their ship there and happily visited the tropical land as if they were on holiday. Captain Tom approached Andy and gave him a cup of coffee and some snacks. He thanked him for saving Dr. Rachel's samples of the viruses with his brilliant idea. At night, the members of the crew were enjoying spending some time together. They sat together by the bonfire and listened to Alicia singing some songs with her beautiful voice. In his room, Dr. Quincy was also happy because he finally found an opponent who had the same skill as him. That man was named Bacon. Dr. Rachel went to Captain Tom's room and thanked him for believing in her. She said that she had successfully created a vaccine, but she still needed to test it to find out. The next day, the Nathan James left the tropical island and began to head to Costa Rica. Even though it still needed repair, Captain Tom still operated the ship because Dr. Rachel needed monkeys to test the vaccine for the virus soon. For the first time in her life, since Dr. Rachel got on the ship, she finally worked out in the ship's gym. She finally managed to find some time to work out after she had been occupied with her work in her laboratory all this time. Mike went to Captain Tom's room and informed Captain Tom about the unstable situation in Costa Rica. He said that not only that there were many people who were infected with the virus, but there was also a civil war that was going on in that country. That civil war was caused by the scarcity of the food and the vaccine. Mike claimed that he had discussed about this problem with Dr. Rachel. He said that Dr. Rachel suggested them to go to Nicaragua instead because there was a monkey sanctuary by a 48 kilometers long river there. However, it would be a little difficult for them to reach that place because the river was too narrow and that area couldn't be detected by the radar. 
After Captain Tom heard that, he finally decided to survey the area first. He only took some members of the crew with him. They went to that place by using two speedboats. On the ship, Alicia and her team stood by in their position to help Captain Tom and his team in case they needed any help. It was important for them to pay attention the color of the signal flare that was used by Captain Tom and his team since they wouldn't communicate with them by using radio contact. If the color of the signal flare was green, then they were doing fine. But if the color of the signal flare was red, then they were in danger and Alicia and her team needed to check on Captain Tom and his team. After a while, Captain Tom and his team finally arrived in the Monkey Sanctuary. Captain Tom didn't allow Dr. Rachel to go to the forest. He asked her to stay on the speedboat with Tex and another member of the crew. Captain Tom and the rest of the crew then began to search the forest to find monkeys that they would take to their boats and use as the subjects of their experiment. But while they were searching that place, a group of infected islanders suddenly showed up in that place. They asked them for help and called them El Toro. Captain Tom and his team didn't want to take a risk of getting infected with the virus. They immediately ran away from that place and returned to their boats. After that, they went to separate ways. Captain Tom and other members of the crew on the first boat would go to the upstream stretch of the river and continue to search for the monkeys. Meanwhile, Dr. Rachel and other members of the crew on the second boat were asked to return to the Nathan James for safety reason. On the Nathan James, Andrea Garnett, the chief engineer of the Nathan James who took charge of the team while Captain Tom was gone, began to worry about Captain Tom and his team because they couldn't trace them anymore. Since there was no radio contact, Captain Tom ordered his team to fire the green signal flare so that the team who stood by on the Nathan James wouldn't worry about them. While searching the upstream stretch of the river, Captain Tom and his team found an abandoned ship instead of monkeys. Before leaving, Captain Tom didn't allow Andrea and Dr. Rachel to search them for the next two days unless they sent them the red signal flare. Suddenly, a member of the crew named Will Mason got injured in the leg after he stepped on the mine. Not long after that, a group of armed men showed up in that place and surrounded them. Those armed men then captured Captain Tom and his team and led them into a village filled with uninfected villagers. It seemed that those villagers were being held hostage and enslaved by those armed men. Captain Tom and his team were then brought to El Toro, the leader of those armed men. Captain Tom told El Toro that he was the leader of 200 sailors of American naval force. He threatened that a larger force of sailors would come to that place if he didn't return him and his team by 11 at night. After El Toro heard that, he suggested them to stay in that place for a while and treat Will's wound first. He claimed that he was the only person in this world who had the cure for the wound. He also asked Captain Tom and his team to have a dinner with him before they left that place. On the Nathan James, Tex began to flirt with Dr. Rachel, but it seemed that Dr. Rachel was not interested in him. El Toro brought Captain Tom and his team to the dining table and introduced them to the former village mayor named Irvin Delgado. It seemed that Irvin was threatened and pressured by El Toro. Apparently, El Toro didn't come from that village. It was revealed that he was a Nicaraguan drug lord who took over that small village and enslaved the uninfected villagers. While they were having a dinner, El Toro called Irvin's daughter, Karina. El Toro planned to add her into to his personal harem. In front of Irvin and other men there, El Toro sexually harassed Karina. Karina was angry because of that. She said that she was sick of living like that. She asked Captain Tom and his team for help. Irvin was scared and surprised when he saw that. He was afraid that El Toro would kill his daughter for what she had just done. He then asked Karina to apologize to El Toro soon. El Toro asked Captain Tom to tell him about the boxes that he carried. Captain Tom finally told him that he needed some monkeys to become the subjects of their experiment. He admitted that it was the reason why he and his team came to that place. El Toro regretted that they didn't tell him about it earlier. He said that he would gladly help him to find those monkeys. After a while, Captain Tom and his team finally found the monkeys they were looking for. While Danny and Mike were carrying the cages that contained the monkeys to their boat, they saw El Toro's subordinates mistreating the villagers. They were angry when they saw that. 
They were getting even more angry when they saw those criminals forcing Karina to go with them and beating Irvin up. Unfortunately, they couldn't do anything to help them. Instead, those criminals also captured them and held them captive again. El Toro promised that he would allow Captain Tom and his team to leave that place with the monkeys, but he would keep the hazmat suits and weapons that they carried. After saying that, he left that place and took Karina with him. On the boat, Mike was still thinking about what El Toro was doing to those villagers. He thought that they needed to do something to stop that psychopath. He couldn't imagine about how furious he would be if his daughter was treated that way. Captain Tom agreed with him. He thought that they needed to do something to stop El Toro and save Irvin and his daughter. He finally told the team to return to the village. At night, Captain Tom and his team began to make a move. When El Toro was about to sexually harass Karina, Captain Tom and his team quietly attacked El Toro's subordinates who guarded that place. After a while, they finally managed to defeat all El Toro's subordinates. They found El Toro and asked him to just give up. Now that El Toro was left alone, he finally decided to surrender. But suddenly, Irvin showed up in that place and killed him by stabbing him with a knife in the stomach. There was no way that he would allow El Toro to leave that place after everything that he did to his daughters and the villagers. The next day, Captain Tom and his team finally returned to their ship safely. Even though they managed to find what they were looking for in that place, they regretted that they couldn't save the infected villagers. As soon as they arrived on the Nathan James, they took a shower and changed their clothes. Captain Tom even spent hours in the bathroom. It seemed that there was a lot of things that he was thinking about. Elisa and her co-worker heard someone asked for help. They worried when they heard that, but they had no idea about what they should do. While Mike was having a dinner with Captain Tom and Russ, he skipped the meal because it consisted of meat. He was still traumatized by meat because it reminded him of the monkey meat that he accidentally ate another day. Captain Tom talked about the right time for them to tell the rest of the crew about what happened in Nicaragua. He thought that it was important for the crew to know about everything that was related to their mission. After he finished having a dinner, he went to the laboratory and saw Dr. Rachel testing the vaccine she made on the monkeys. Dr. Rachel said that they would find out about the results in the next few days. After that, Captain Tom told the crew about the progress of Dr. Rachel's work in the laboratory. He also told them about how they managed to save 150 uninfected villagers that were held captive and enslaved by a criminal named El Toro. Despite that, he regretted that he was unable to save the infected villagers. Captain Tom announced that they would be heading to their home country, the United States, now while waiting for Dr. Rexel to finish conducting her experiments. He hoped that they would finish creating the vaccine for the virus by the time they arrived in the United States. Tex asked Danny if he had a crush on someone on the ship. He asked him to be honest with him and tell him about that woman. He worried that they had a crush on the same woman. While Dr. Quincy was taking a sunbath, he told Bacon that he actually knew about how to create the vaccine for the virus. But he refused to tell Dr. Rachel about it because he still couldn't make sure about his safety. It seemed that Dr. Rachel still needed to work days and nights to find the vaccine for the virus because the first vaccine that she made had failed. The monkeys that were tested with the vaccine died. Captain Tom was disappointed when he found out about that. He knew that he needed to tell the crew about it but he was afraid that he would disappoint them after raising their hopes. He finally told Dr. Rachel to throw those dead monkeys into the sea at night. Later, Captain Tom discussed about this problem with Russ and Mike. He suggested that they suspended their journey to the United States by turning off the ship's machine. Dr. Quincy soon realized that Dr. Rachel had failed to create the vaccine for the virus after they turned off the ship's machine. He told Bacon that Captain Tom turned off the ship's machine so that Dr. Rachel would have more time to conduct her experiments and create the perfect vaccine for the virus. He thought that they were supposed to conduct those experiments in the tropical countries like Brazil, Venezuela, or Puerto Rico. But he was not sure that Captain Tom would take a risk to go to those countries because Ruskov was patrolling near there. Dr. Quincy then began to instigate Bacon by saying that Captain Tom planned to take the vaccine for his own self and wanted to harm all of them. To prove what he said, he reminded Bacon about the time when Captain Tom took them to the narrow canal 
so that the hull of the ship would be damaged by the coral reefs. At night, while two soldiers were patrolling on the ship, they saw Dr. Rachel throwing something into the sea. But they had no idea that it was the dead monkeys that Dr. Rachel threw into the sea. In another room, some soldiers were having a conversation. Suddenly, Danny came to that room and collapsed. Those soldiers were surprised when they saw that. They thought that Danny had been infected with the virus. For that reason, they didn't do anything when Danny lied unconscious on the floor. Only Tex, who was willing to approach Danny and check on him. Dr. Rachel and Captain Tom tried to convince the crew that Danny was only having a fever and not getting infected with the virus. But suddenly, a doctor came to that place with his hazmat suit. Everybody in that room began to get paranoid when they saw him, including Captain Tom. Captain Tom finally decided to order Mike to warn the crew to stay alert. He instructed them to close all accesses to the ship and wear their hazmat suits to anticipate the worst-case scenario. Kara worried when she heard about what happened to Danny. She rushed to the intensive care unit to check on him. After spending a few hours to check on Danny, the doctor finally told Captain Tom that Danny was only having a regular fever, not a contagious fever. Captain Tom felt relieved when he heard that, but he finally found out that Danny and Kara were in a relationship. He realized that Danny was late for a few minutes to attack Ruskov's ship, Vyrny, back then because of his personal problem with his lover, Kara. For that reason, he would consider to give punishment for both Danny and Kara. Dr. Rachel was frustrated because she still hadn't figured out about how to create the good vaccine for the virus. Tex approached her and tried to encourage her. He believed that Dr. Rachel would be able to create the vaccine for the virus someday. Russ informed Captain Tom that there were 16 soldiers who wanted to leave the ship because they thought that they had completed their task on the Nathan James and now they needed to complete military service. But the truth was, those reasons was only an excuse. Turned out, those 16 soldiers wanted to leave the ship because they had been provoked by Dr. Quincy regarding of Dr. Rachel's failure in creating the vaccine. After that, Captain Tom called the 16 soldiers who wanted to leave the Nathan James, including Michael O'Connor, the soldier who saw Dr. Rachel throwing the dead monkeys into the sea that night. Once they gathered on the deck, Captain Tom apologized to them because he hadn't told them about Dr. Rachel's failure in creating the vaccine. He admitted that he was hiding that fact from them all this time because he didn't want to discourage and disappoint them. He'd assured his crew that the Nathan James was the safest place on Earth right now. To prove what he said, he showed them the record of the voice of the people on the land who cried for help and asked them to save them. While those people suffered on the land, they still had hope on that ship. Captain Tom also asked the crew to visit the laboratory for the first time so that they could see how Dr. Rachel had been working hard to save mankind all this time. Dr. Rachel asked them to be patient and hope for the best. She admitted that she had no idea if she would be able to create the vaccine for the virus or not, but she promised that she would never give up. Despite everything, Captain Tom wouldn't stop those 16 soldiers who wanted to leave the Nathan James. He promised that he would send them home and take care of them properly until they arrived home safely. Surprisingly, those 16 soldiers finally changed their mind. They canceled their plan to leave the Nathan James and asked Captain Tom to allow them to keep working there. In front of Captain Tom, they took the military oath. After that, Captain Tom went to the isolation room to talk to Dr. Quincy. He warned him that starting from that day, he was not allowed to talk to anyone on that ship, including his chess partner, Bacon. He did that to punish him because he knew that it was because of him that those 16 soldiers wanted to leave the Nathan James. The next scene revealed about six months before the virus spread around the world. That afternoon, two scientists, Neil Sorensen and Jonas Lindblom, were having a conversation about gene splicing. Niels admitted that he had been experimenting on himself and that he was completely healthy. Jonas worried when he heard that. He thought that it was too dangerous and that they tried it on mousepox in Australia. He thought that Niels had already lost his mind. Not long after that, Niels' wife came to that place. She told Niels that she began to feel unwell after they made out last night. It wasn't revealed yet if Niels was the one who began to spread the virus. Back to the present time, Ruska visited Niels in his room. 
He asked him about what Dr. Rachel would do after she created the vaccine for the virus. Neil said that Dr. Rachel would need new subjects to test the vaccine, and those subjects must have bigger bodies than the bodies of mice. He thought that Dr. Rachel would choose monkeys to test the vaccine, and she would probably go to Puerto Rico or Nicaragua to find those monkeys. On the Nathan James, Dr. Rachel informed Captain Tom that the gene that was added to the virus was a human gene. It seemed that that human gene was from Niels. Dr. Rachel said that she couldn't do another test randomly because there were only two monkeys left. In another room, Alicia and Will heard a woman named Bertrice asked for help. That woman said that she was on a fishing vessel named Octopus by herself and that everybody else on that ship was already dead. After Will heard that, he came to see Captain Tom and told him about it. He said that Bertrice told him that there were 50 people on the fishing vessel three weeks earlier. But a week after that, there were 15 people left, and now there was only Bertrice left. Dr. Rachel was surprised when she heard that. She concluded that Bertrice had a natural immunity to the virus. To find out about the truth, she wanted to analyze her DNA. She wondered if she could find the clues to create the vaccine for the virus if she analyzed her DNA. After Captain Tom heard that, he finally decided to contact Bertrice, even though he knew that doing so would probably allow the enemy to trace their location. Turned out, what Captain Tom worried about became true. Ruskov managed to trace the location of the Nathan James after they communicated with Bertrice via radio. Ruskov and his men then planned to ambush the octopus ship when the crew of the Nathan James visited that place to rescue Bertrice. Danny asked a sailor named Cassetti to join the search and seize team to go to the octopus ship and find Bertrice. He did this to make up for the mistake that he did another day. He promised Captain Tom that he would never waste the chance that was given to him. After that, Captain Tom led two teams to go to the octopus ship to look for Bertrice. After a while, they finally arrived on the octopus ship. As soon as they arrived there, they began to search that ship and look for Bertrice. On the Nathan James, Mike sent a helicopter to the octopus ship after he realized that there were two Russian speedboats that approached that ship. On the octopus ship, the team finally managed to find Bertrice, who was hiding in a room there. After they found her, they immediately took her with them. While they were doing that, Captain Tom and Tex tried to distract the attention of the Russian soldiers who approached that place. A gun battle between those American soldiers and those Russian soldiers then began. After a while, Tex managed to shoot the Russian soldiers. Unfortunately, their speedboat also had to suffer from some damage because of the gun battle. For that reason, Captain Tom and Tex finally decided to jump into the sea and return to their ship by swimming. They were afraid that they would get captured by Ruskov's men if they stayed on that speedboat. On the Nathan James, Mike heard Ruskov and his men talked about something in Russian. Mike asked Dr. Quincy to translate what they were talking about. He wanted to know about what they were planning to do. Dr. Quincy agreed to do that, but he wanted to make sure that they would kill Ruskov after this. The helicopter was still searching for the octopus ship. After a while, they finally managed to find the speedboat that was used by Captain Tom and his team. But unfortunately, they couldn't find Captain Tom and Tex anywhere. But suddenly, they received information from Captain Tom. Surprisingly, Captain Tom didn't allow them to look for him. He was afraid that Ruskov and his men would be able to trace their ship if they were looking for them. He then asked Tex to swim to the east because there were coral reefs there. On the Nathan James, Dr. Rachel was glad because the team could finally rescue Bertrice. But she soon began to get worried when she found out that Captain Tom and Tex hadn't returned to the ship. Since Mike was the one who took charge of the Nathan James now, he was the one who had the right to make the decision. It was up to him if he wanted to obey Captain Tom's order not to look for them or made his own decision. On the Vyerny, Ruskov was having a dinner with Dr. Quincy's wife and daughter. It seemed that he took care of them well, but it wasn't revealed yet about the reason why he was doing that. Suddenly, a man came to that room and informed Ruskov that they overheard radio transmission between Captain Tom and the crew of the Nathan James. He found out that Captain Tom asked his team not to look for him. After Ruskov heard that, he immediately ordered his men to fly a drone to find Captain Tom. 
On the Nathan James, we'll finally found the radio signal that was used by Captain Tom to contact them earlier. Mike suggested them to activate and deactivate the radioactive in turn so that the enemy wouldn't be able to trace them. His strategy finally worked. The Russian drone that was sent to find Captain Tom was unable to trace him in Tex, even though it was already approaching their location. Ruskov was confused when he saw that. He believed that Captain Tom's men wouldn't let their captain die just like that. On the Nathan James, Dr. Rachel was drawing blood from Bertris. She planned to analyze her blood because she wondered how she could be immune to the virus. In the sea, Tex and Captain Tom were having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. To Captain Tom, Tex finally admitted that he had been falling in love with Dr. Rachel since he saw her for the first time. He said that because of Dr. Rachel, he could finally forget his ex-girlfriend. Russ informed Mike that Bertris had a mutated gene that made her immune to any kinds of virus, and Dr. Rachel planned to test her blood sample on the monkeys. If the experiment worked, then they would most likely find the vaccine for the virus. At night, Mike sent another helicopter to find Captain Tom and Tex. He instructed the helicopter to fly at low altitudes and zigzag lines so that the enemy wouldn't be able to trace them. After a while, a helicopter finally managed to find Captain Tom and Tex. They then picked them up and brought them onto the helicopter. But when they arrived there, they realized that those soldiers were Russian soldiers. Those Russian soldiers then took Captain Tom and Tex to the Vyrny. When they arrived there, they took Tex to a place. Meanwhile, they took Captain Tom to Ruskov, who was still having a dinner with Dr. Quincy's family. Before Ava Toffet, Dr. Quincy's daughter, left that room, she asked Captain Tom if he came with her father. Captain Tom told her no, but he assured her that Dr. Quincy was safe on his ship. Ruskov then introduced Dr. Quincy's wife, Kelly, to Captain Tom. He revealed that Kelly was the one who pretended to become the English commander when they contacted them for the first time back then. Ruskov then asked Captain Tom about the progress that Dr. Rachel made in creating the vaccine for the virus. Captain Tom refused to answer his question. Instead, he told him about his identity as the commanding officer of the U.S. Nathan James. Ruskov laughed when he heard that. He thought that just like all countries in this world that had been destroyed by the pandemic, identity was not relevant anymore. On the Nathan James, Mike and Russ began to worry because they hadn't heard anything from Captain Tom again. In the laboratory, Bertris told Dr. Rachel that when she was a child, she used to get sick easily. She often had a fever and caught a cold which made her rarely attend school. Because of that, her schoolmates mocked her and said that she was only pretending to be sick so that she could skip school. But now that she had become an adult, she became immune to any kinds of illnesses. Bertris was happy because of that. Suddenly, Mike received a call from Ruskov. Ruskov told Mike that he had found and captured Captain Tom and Tex. He said that he would return Captain Tom to the Nathan James if they gave Dr. Rachel to him. Mike was confused when he heard that. Ruskov threatened that he would kill both Captain Tom and Tex if Mike hadn't made any decisions in 10 minutes. At the same time, Dr. Rachel came to that room and told Mike that she had successfully created the vaccine for the virus. She also said that she was willing to meet with Ruskov so that he returned Captain Tom and Tex to them. She thought that the Nathan James wouldn't need them anymore after all because the doctor on the Nathan James would be able to create the vaccine with the formula that she had created now. Mike then contacted Ruskov and told him that they agreed to give Dr. Rachel to them. But before they did that, they would make sure that they had prepared everything first. Cassetti planned to destroy the ventilation of the Vyrny so that the propellers there wouldn't be able to rotate anymore. Danny asked Cassetti to go to the Vyrny with him so that they could execute their plan. Before they sent Dr. Rachel to the Vyrny, they also equipped her with a gun and a bug that was put inside the briefcase that contained the vaccine. Mike, who initially didn't really like Dr. Rachel, now changed his opinion about her. He began to respect her because he knew that it was not easy for her to make that decision. After a while, Dr. Rachel finally arrived on the Vyrny. Before she went inside, the Russian soldiers checked her first. Fortunately, they didn't find the bug that was carried by Dr. Rachel. Because of that, Kara managed to find the location of the Vyrny. 
When Dr. Rachel met with Captain Tom, she immediately kissed him on the mouth. Tex was surprised and jealous when he saw that. After that, Dr. Rachel went to the laboratory where Niels was working in. When she arrived there, she saw Niels being held captive in an isolation room. She realized that he had been infected with the virus, but he didn't have the symptoms. Niels didn't deny that he had been infected with the virus. He even admitted that he was the one who added the human gene to the virus and added it back to his body afterward. He thought that his innovation worked because he became immune to the virus now. But he couldn't believe that it was because of him that the virus was spread around the world and caused the global pandemic now. He felt guilty for what he did and wanted to make up for his mistake. For that reason, he wanted to see Dr. Rachel. He thought that Dr. Rachel could help him to save the world by creating the vaccine for the virus by using his DNA. But Dr. Rachel immediately refused to do that. She said that she had created the vaccine for the virus by using Bertrice's DNA. Apparently, the reason why Dr. Rachel kissed Captain Tom on the mouth earlier was because she wanted to give a small knife and a piece of paper to him. That piece of paper contained the place and the time that Captain Tom needed to visit later. Dr. Rachel told Ruskov that she had found the vaccine for the virus. Despite that, Ruskov refused to believe in her right away. He then decided to prove what she said by testing the vaccine on his subordinate. He injected the vaccine into his subordinate's body and sent him to Neil's isolation room. The team from the Nathan James that was sent by Mike was getting closer to the virome. They hoped that Dr. Rachel managed to send the message to Captain Tom. Ruskov approached Captain Tom and Tex in their cell. He told them that everybody in the world would look for him if the vaccine worked out and he managed to make the copy of the vaccine. He believed that he would become the most important person in the world and defeat the United States by then. He then asked Captain Tom to work with him, but Captain Tom didn't answer him. Instead, he told him about his identity as the commanding officer of the U.S. Nathan James again. It seemed that he decided to be loyal no matter what happened. Captain Tom noticed that it was almost four in the morning. He then asked the guard to allow him to go to the restroom. But when the guard was about to open the door of the cell, Captain Tom suddenly attacked him. Captain Tom and Tex then left their cell and attacked two other guards. After that, they finally met with the rescue team. Danny and Cassetti went to a room and planted some bombs there. Before Captain Tom looked for Dr. Rachel, he freed Dr. Quincy's family and asked them to leave that place soon. Unfortunately, the Russians found out that their ship had been infiltrated by the enemy. Ruskov warned his subordinate not to turn on the alarm. He told them to close all accesses to that ship and take Dr. Rachel with them. Dr. Rachel tried to buy time by saying that she needed to inject the second dose of the vaccine into the man's body. But turned out it was only her excuse to take the gun that she had prepared inside the briefcase. When she opened the briefcase, she secretly took the gun and used it to shoot the guard. Not long after that, Captain Tom came to that place and tried to calm Dr. Rachel down. He knew that it was the first time for Dr. Rachel to kill a man. Meanwhile, Cassetti and Danny were escorting Kelly and Ava. Before they left that ship, Cassetti pressed the button of the remote control that was used to detonate the bombs. Because of that, the bombs that they had planted suddenly exploded and damaged the hull of the ship. Captain Tom found it strange that Ruskov didn't turn on the alarm or use the radio, even though his ship was in danger. He believed that behind that closed door, there were Russian soldiers who were waiting for them. He then instructed his team to find another way to leave that place. When Captain Tom and his team reached the deck, the Russian soldiers began to shoot at them. The gun battle between those American soldiers and those Russian soldiers then happened. Niels knew that the Vyerny was going to get destroyed soon, so he disguised himself as a soldier and joined other soldiers to run away from that ship. It seemed that everybody on that ship would get infected with the virus. Captain Tom and his team finally managed to get on the boat and leave the Vyerny. Unfortunately, during the rescue, Cassetti was shot fatally in the stomach. Captain Tom and his team tried to save him, but he collapsed and died eventually. In the woods in Virginia, Jed Chandler, the father of Captain Tom Chandler, brought a deer to a trailer. That trailer belonged to his neighbor. 
Jet planned to give the deer to his neighbor, but his neighbor warned him that he had been infected with the virus. After Jed heard that, he finally left the deer and marked the trailer with a red X. After that, he returned to his cabin. In his cabin, he lived with his grandchildren and Darian Chandler, Captain Tom's wife. Darian told Jed that she would go to an electronic store to get the radio part that Jed needed to fix the radio. With that radio, they would be able to contact Captain Tom. On the Nathan James, after Dr. Rachel had successfully tested the vaccine on the monkeys, she needed six people who had different blood types and genetics to test the vaccine now. Tex volunteered himself to do that after he heard that. Bertrice wanted to be there for the vaccine trials because it was made from her blood. She hoped that the vaccine would be able to save the world. After Cassetti's funeral was finished being held, Captain Tom, Mike, and Russ discussed about how they would get six volunteers for the trials. Captain Tom said that he would volunteer, but Russ said that he had been approved by Dr. Rachel to participate. Russ thought that the crew needed Captain Tom and Mike more, that they needed him. Surprisingly, there were dozens of people who wanted to volunteer for the vaccine trials, even though they knew that it could result in death. After a while, the six people who would be tested with the vaccine had been finally chosen. Dr. Rachel injected the vaccine into their bodies and said that they would be injected with the virus in three days. In the electronics store, Darian was looking for the part that she needed for the radio. But suddenly, she heard someone outside. She was surprised when she saw a man shooting a woman to death just because that woman had been infected with the virus. She immediately hid inside the store. She didn't know that there was an infected dead body near her. On the Nathan James, Dr. Rachel checked on all volunteers. Out of those volunteers, only Russ and Kara, who had a fever. Not long after that, Tex noticed that Kara's body temperature reached 40 Celsius degrees. He panicked and called Dr. Rachel right away. Dr. Rachel then asked Bertrice to help her to take some ice cubes for Kara since she was immune to the virus. Because of those ice cubes, Dr. Rachel finally managed to help Kara to decrease her body temperature. Danny couldn't sleep because he worried about Kara. He finally decided to stay up all night and play cards with Carlton Burke, the executive officer of the Nathan James. A few hours after taking the vaccine, the volunteers began to show different symptoms. Andrea Garnett was one of those volunteers. She thought that her energy began to get drained after she took the vaccine. Meanwhile, Tex's back was covered with rash. Not long after that, Andrea began to get delirious. She began to act strangely by mistaking Kara for her daughter. Tex began to become rude and irritating and Russ suddenly removed the IV line from his body. Unfortunately, one of the volunteers, Maya, finally died after the blood running out of her nose. Captain Tom and his team were surprised and heartbroken when they found out about that, especially Dr. Rachel. Dr. Rachel and Dr. Quincy then had an argument. Dr. Quincy thought that Maya died because the vaccine wasn't working, but Dr. Rachel insisted that Maya died because of heart attack, and it was not because the vaccine wasn't working. Dr. Quincy wanted to take the plasma from Bertrice's blood and injected it into the bodies of the volunteers. Dr. Rachel protested because it would be too risky, but Bertrice agreed to volunteer. Dr. Rachel and Bertrice then went to a room. While Dr. Rachel was taking Bertrice's plasma, Dr. Quincy suddenly came to that room and handed her a file. Dr. Rachel was surprised when she found out that Kara was pregnant. Captain Tom approached Danny and told him about Kara's pregnancy. He allowed him to visit Kara because he worried that her condition continued to worsen. Dr. Rachel began to get depressed as she realized that she had failed to create the vaccine. Dr. Quincy saw her huddling in the corner. He approached her and tried to encourage her, but Dr. Rachel said that she wanted to be alone. Captain Tom told the crew that if they wanted to visit anyone, then now was the time. He was afraid that the vaccine wasn't working and the volunteers were going to die soon. Suddenly, Dr. Rachel remembered that Bertrice once told her that she often got sick when she was a child. She thought that Bertrice's childhood illness was likely a result from her immune system targeting a self-molecule and leading to an autoimmune response. She explained that if the volunteers' bodies attacked themselves, 
then the virus changed its shape to expose a human molecule from Neil's DNA after getting exposed to the vaccine. She said that the monkeys didn't show those symptoms because they didn't have human DNA. For that reason, Dr. Rachel would try to hide the human DNA to prevent the autoimmune response by using the primordial strain of the virus as a vector. Dr. Rachel and her team then modified the vaccine and injected it into the volunteers' bodies. A few hours after those volunteers getting injected with the vaccine, the remaining volunteers finally managed to survive and begin to recover. Bertrice was happy when she saw that. Dr. Rachel predicted that Kara's baby would have the same immunity to the virus with that of Bertrice once it was born. Danny was happy when he heard that. He approached Kara and told her that she was pregnant with his baby. Captain Tom came to see Dr. Rachel and thanked her personally. He thought that his dream to save the world would come true soon. In Virginia, in his cabin, Jed Chandler was still trying to find the radio signal to contact the Nathan James. He hoped that he would be able to talk to his son, Captain Tom, by using the radio soon. Darian was also waiting anxiously. It seemed that she was having a fever. Not long after that, she began to feel unwell. A few hours later, Jed, Darian, and the children were all sick. On the Nathan James, all members of the crew were immunized against the virus as they were heading home. Dr. Rachel told Captain Tom that she still had around 60 extra doses of the vaccine that they could use before they produced and distributed it to society. After saying that, she injected a dose of the vaccine into Captain Tom's body. In his room, Tex was annoyed by himself because he had poured his heart out to Dr. Rachel, even though he was having a fever that time. He talked about his feelings to Danny's dog, Halsey, that was listening to him in that room. Mike told the crew that before they returned home, they would go to Fort Dietrich first so that they could produce more vaccines. After that, the members of the crew went to the deck and searched for signals. They hoped that they would receive calls from their loved ones. Suddenly, Kara noticed that there was a satellite that was passing near them. They then checked the satellite and found out that Fort Dietrich had been completely destroyed. Captain Tom noticed that the buildings around that place were not destroyed. For that reason, he suspected that Fort Dietrich had been targeted. In Virginia, Jed was heading to Olympia to save his grandchildren and daughter-in-law. But on their way to that place, a group of armed men suddenly stopped them and told them to return home. They said that Olympia couldn't save them. But the desperate Jed refused to listen to them and blasted through the roadblock instead. On the Nathan James, Will told Captain Tom and Mike about the broadcast that wanted to communicate with the Nathan James. They responded to that broadcast, but there was no answer from them anymore. Captain Tom assumed that they lost their radio signal. While Jed was checking his car, he also heard the same broadcast. He felt relieved when he heard that broadcast because it meant that Captain Tom was still alive. On the Nathan James, Will received a video call from Amy Granderson, the vice chair of the president's policy board. She was also the mother of Alicia Granderson. Amy admitted that she was happy that she could hear Captain Tom's voice again because it meant that her daughter, Alicia, was still alive too. Amy informed Captain Tom that the American government was mostly gone after the president and the presidential staff died in the presidential bunker. The next scene introduced a man named Andrew Thorwald. Andrew was a former police officer who was also the leader of a resistance group called the Warlords. He was also the man who shot the infected woman in the electronics store to death. He knew that Jed and his family were trying to go to Olympia, and he planned to stop the plane that was heading to that place. After Andrew heard that Amy Granderson would greet the Nathan James who would arrive there soon, he ordered his men to prepare themselves to greet them too. After a while, Captain Tom and his team finally reached that place. When they arrived there, the head of security named Pete Norris and his team greeted them. In the different corner in that place, Andrew and his men were secretly watching them. But turned out, they were not targeting Captain Tom and his team, but targeting Amy. When Amy arrived in that place, they aimed their firearm at her. They wanted to shoot her, but they were unable to do that because she was blocked. After that, Captain Tom and his team were heading to a laboratory facility called Avocet. It was the only laboratory facility that was left in that place. Amy told Captain Tom and his team that aside from the virus, 
that city was also facing a real threat from a resistance group called the Warlords. She explained that they had stolen some important national documents and even tried to steal the original constitution too. She said that the Warlords had killed more people than the virus. Pete told Mike that Andrew Thorwald was a former Baltimore police officer who now became the leader of the Warlords, the resistance group that they had been trying to put down all this time. Dr. Ratchel looked around the laboratory facility and found out that it was equipped with good technologies. The scientists who were working in that place gave a round of applause for her because she managed to create the vaccine for the virus. Captain Tom asked Amy to allow him to use the radio. He wanted to use the radio to contact his family. Tex approached Dr. Rachel and said goodbye to her. He said that he would continue to live even though she was not there with him. After saying that, he kissed her and walked away. After a while, Captain Tom finally managed to contact his father. Jed told him that he and his family were in Baltimore and were heading to Olympia now. Captain Tom asked him to stay there. He said that he and his team would go to that place and looked for them. But when Captain Tom arrived there, he didn't find his father and his family anywhere. Instead, he found out that the radio that his father used to communicate with him earlier was already used by someone else. Captain Tom was getting even more confused when the police officers who took him to that place suddenly tried to stop him from heading to Olympia. He thought that there was something strange about it. After a while, Captain Tom's team and Baltimore police officers finally attacked each other. During the struggle, Rust was shot in the arm. Captain Tom ordered Kara to take Rust back to the ship. Meanwhile, he and Carlton would stay behind and go to the Olympia to find his family. Amy approached her daughter, Alicia, and began to ask her about what kind of person Captain Tom was. She asked her if he was a good leader and if he would still follow orders. Alicia was confused when she heard that. She thought that there was something strange going on. In the laboratory, Dr. Rachel also found out that there was something wrong with the work of Dr. Hamada and Dr. Neustadter. She pointed out that their dosages would be highly toxic. Instead of helping sick people, the dosages would kill them immediately. Captain Tom and Carlton arrived at the Olympia Stadium, where sick people were receiving treatment. After searching that place for a while, Captain Tom finally managed to reunite with his family. He immediately hugged them and gave them the vaccine for the virus. Jen apologized to him because he had failed to save Darian. Captain Tom was shocked and depressed when he learned that his wife had passed away. On the Nathan James, when Pete was looking around the bridge, he suddenly pulled a gun and shot a member of the crew. He told Mike that he was taking over the ship. Dr. Quincy tried to stop him, but Pete managed to shoot him first. Dr. Rachel came to see Amy and confronted her about what she had been doing to those infected people. Amy admitted that she killed those infected people because she wanted to clean up the city. She said that she would become the mayor of the city soon, and she didn't want any infected people in her city. Meanwhile, Andrew was walking through a refuge and providing people there with food and shelter. Despite his reputation as the criminal, he was apparently the one who really cared about those people. Turned out, he didn't allow those people to go to the Olympia Stadium because he knew that the government didn't give the free treatment to heal them, but to kill them slowly. When Captain Tom found out about the truth, the government began to hunt him down too. Captain Tom was getting even more shocked when he saw some pickup trucks carrying the dead bodies of those infected people to a place to get burned down. On the Nathan James, the members of the crew were forced to go to the deck after Amy and her subordinates took over the ship. Captain Tom tried to contact the Nathan James by using the radio, but nobody answered him. 